everyone, I don't do intros because intros are lame. Today I'm doing a bookshelf tour, yay! So this is my mini bookshelf because I'm in college and um, all of my other books are at home on a bigger bookshelf, a much bigger bookshelf. Um, but obviously I can't fit that in my dorm room, so I decided to bring this tiny bookshelf with the essential books that I want. My TBR books and the books that I just always like to have around. So today I'm going to give you a little tour of that. Um, I also have a couple of little, um, knickknacks and things on here. So some of them have some personal meaning, so you'll get to see those as well. Um, since I don't have quite as many books as normal bookshelf tours have, I'm probably going to give a little bit of um, background on the different books that I have, like how I got them, if they have any personal meaning to me, um, things like that, just to make the video a little longer, give it some extra meat in the video. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I have on my bookshelf is this sort of white pumpkin. Um, I put it up because it's Halloween, and yeah, pumpkins are pretty cool, I think. So yeah, there's that. I'm going to put it down here so it's not in the way. So this full shelf is my contemporary shelf, um, also the one below it is the continued contemporary shelf because I love contemporary. So first I have Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen. This copy is actually really beat up, you can't tell there's staples here. Um, I bought it like for a dollar at a second hand store. Um, I mostly just bought it because I really like Sarah Dessen. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to eventually. We'll get there. Next we have Butterflies by Suzanne Gervais. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So I bought this book because it is called Butterflies, <laughs> because I really like butterflies, if you can't tell by my channel name. Um, yeah, that's really the only reason I bought it. I thought that it sounded interesting too. Um, it's something about, um, she was severely burned or something, I don't really know because <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but yeah, that's really the only reason I bought it. Um, I'll read it eventually. If you can't tell, um, already, most of the books on my bookshelf I haven't read yet because, um, all the ones that I have read are at home still, um, because I don't really need to read them again unless, like, they're my favorites, so. Don't judge me for not having read most of these, that's the reason why I brought them. So next we have Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. Um, haven't read this one either, but I've heard lots of really good things about Morgan Matson's contemporary novels, and I found this one at, um, Half Price Books, I think. That's one of my favorite bookstores, um, because it's cheap. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm really excited to read it. I don't really know much about it, but, yeah, eventually I'll read it. <laughs> Hopefully. The next book is... An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. I have read this one. Um, I have it here because I love John Green, so I have all the John Green books that I own, except for a duplicate copy, are with me right now. Yeah, this one is really good. It's about this kid who is a prodigy. He's really, really good at math. And so the book, it actually has a lot of footnotes, and that's really interesting to me, um, to read the footnotes. John Green has a great sense of humor, and you can really see it in his writing. So I really recommend this one. It's one of my favorites. The next book is Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. Um, I haven't read this one because I just bought it recently at Half Price Books. And I mostly bought it because it's partially by John Green. Um, I don't really know what it's about. It's probably about winter considering the title and the cover. Um, yeah, uh, we'll get to it eventually. Next we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I have actually started this book. I'm only like 20 or so pages into it because I kind of got bored, so I put it aside. I will eventually get back to it. Um, I bought it a couple months ago because it has been on my TBR for a while because I just hear great things about it. It's about this girl who was born with wings, um, and it goes through the, her whole family history. So, um, definitely interesting and a different type of book, but I'm really excited to get into it. Or continue with it, I guess. <laughs> Next is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I have read this one. It was my first read of this year, and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was very, very good. It sort of relates to Fangirl, if you've read that one. She writes a um, online comic series called Monstrous Sea, and the most popular fanfiction writer of her comic series moves to her school, and they sort of have a thing 
Um, but he doesn't know that she's the author of that book series, so it kind of starts some drama. Um, very good book, I highly recommend. The next book is A Trick of the Light by Lois Metzger. I've had this book for several years. Um, I bought it out of one of those Scholastic book catalog things when I was in like 8th grade. I only bought it because it's about eating disorders and if you have been watching some of my videos you'll know that I have a weird obsession with eating disorders but I really like to read about them. Um, I have read this one. It's very good. Very good representation of eating disorders. If you like eating disorder books Here's one for you, but um, don't read if it'll be triggering to you in any way. Obviously, it could trigger some people, but I recommend because I like eating disorders. <laughs> the next book is Waiting by Carol Lynch Williams. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I love the cover. That's actually the reason why I picked it up. I actually, the first time I read it, I got it from the library, um, and I read it in one full night. I mean, granted, it's not very long because it's written sort of in verse. The pages are not full written pages. But yeah, I read it and I just bawled while I was reading it. So I decided to buy it. I have reread it since the first time I read it. Just as good as the first time. It's about a girl whose brother has recently died and it's about her coping with his death. So it's a little triggering in the death portion, but very, very good. The next book is Cut by Patricia McCormick. This book is about a girl who suffers with depression and she self-harms. Um, she goes to a mental institution um, to help her deal with her problems. I have read this book, but it was many, many years ago, so I think I might reread it at some point. It's really short, so it won't take me very long. It obviously can be very triggering with the content, so just be warned of that if you decide to read it. But I have good memories of the first time that I read it, so I, I like, like I said, I don't really remember what it's about, but I think I liked it, so maybe I'll read it again soon. Next I have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. If you haven't read this book before or you haven't seen the movie, it's mostly about a boy who's a freshman in high school and he's just dealing with being a freshman in high school and really having no friends and it sounds kind of depressing but it's really good. It's written in letters to address to friend so it's almost as if he's writing letters to you and explaining um, what's going on in his life. Um, very good. Recommend. I have read this one before. Um, I read it on audiobook the first time so I kind of want to reread it in the physical copy just to see if I have any different experiences physically reading it versus audiobook. Next is Curveball, The Year I Lost My Grip by Jordan Sonnenblick. I honestly have no idea what this book is about. I mean, it's a Golden Sower nominee, so obviously it's pretty good. Um, I only picked it up because of the author. Um, my boyfriend and I did speech when we were in high school, and he did a duet of a different book, Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie by Jordan Sonnenblick. So, yeah, I saw it at a secondhand store and I was like, oh, I know that author, I'm gonna buy it. So, I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. So, the next thing we have on my bookshelf is this little duck. Um, he's a lucky duck, if you can't tell, because he's a little four leaf clover. Um, I got it from one of those, like, quarter machines at restaurants. Actually, my uh, boyfriend bought him for me, so, yeah, he kind of just sits here, hangs out. So this is another one of my contemporary shelves. These are obviously all hardbacks because they just fit better this way. Um, yeah, so let's just get started. So the first book on this shelf is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. This is my favorite John Green novel. Um, if you haven't read it, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, this one is actually a signed copy, so if you open up the book somewhere in here, it, is, it has his signature, so that's really cool. I actually bought it at um, Goodwill for $5, so it's a pretty good steal for a signed copy. Um, I actually do have two copies of this book, but my boyfriend currently has the other one and he's reading it. He is really enjoying it for someone who doesn't read very much. Yeah, it's about a girl who has OCD and, and um, it's also about some sort of mystery. It's been a couple years since I've read it, so I want to reread it again, as I want to with all of the books, but I just don't have time to reread everything. Um, <laughs> So yeah, highly recommend, like I said, my favorite John Green novel. It can be triggering for some people who have anxiety or OCD, so just be warned of that before you go in, but highly recommend. So my next book is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Um, this is the special 10th anniversary edition, um, so that's why it looks a little bit different. 
I do have a copy of the standard cover. I just don't have it with me. It's at home. It's also a lot more beat up than this copy, so I don't really use it too much when I'm going to reread it. I'm going to read this one. Um, I think I might have some bonus material in the back. Yeah, there's a Q&A. Also, look at the inside cover and under the dust jacket. It is gorgeous. Anyway. Um, this book is about a kid who goes to a summer camp and he meets this girl named Alaska and it's kind of about um, their relationship and just his what he learns about in summer camp. This was John Green's first novel if you don't know. So it, John Green was still trying to get his feel for writing but I still highly recommend. Um, it's probably my second favorite John Green book after Turtles All the Way Down. Great book. Love it. Next we have Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. Um, I actually read this book on audiobook for the first time um, a couple months ago. I think it was like last winter. But I just fell in love with it. There's such a beautiful love story in it. And it's very bittersweet. It's not just your standard I love you, you love me, happy ending love story. It's got lots of um, deep, personal, sort of sad moments. So. Yeah, I read it on audiobook and I fell in love with it, so I decided to buy a copy. Um, I got it from Thrift Books, I want to say, which is why it's a little beat up right here. That's still a great place to buy books for super cheap if you're okay with them maybe having a little bit of wear and tear, um, which I am okay with because you can tell that the book has been loved when they've got a little bit of damage to them. They've been read a couple of times. Um, yeah, I really, really like this book. I want to reread the physical copy. Um, highly recommend. Um, I'm going to feel like I'm going to say that for all of these books on the shelf because I highly recommend all of them. The next book I have is Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. Um, Lori Hulse Anderson is one of my favorite authors of all time. She wrote my favorite book, which we'll get to in a few books here. This was her first novel, and I actually read it for the first time in May because my friend and I um, decided to do a readathon and in order to like a 24-hour readathon and the first book that we were going to read in the readathon was the other person would write like annotate in their favorite book and then we would swap so like for me I, I annotated a copy of Winter Girls that I bought for her and then she annotated this one so you can see all the little tabs where she wrote stuff in um, and she kind of like circled some stuff and wrote, highlighted some things in here that she really liked. Um, so yeah, she did this one for me, so that's where I got it from. This is the, um, some sort of special edition. I don't know, this was a re-released um, cover. The original cover doesn't look like this, but I really prefer this cover over the original one. It's so gorgeous. And this one is about a girl who struggles with um, depression and is kind of just going through high school and this whole time she has this art project about a tree and the tree sort of becomes a symbol of some of the stuff that's happening in her life. Um, it's very good. It's kind of a slow read because there's not a lot of dialogue, at least I thought it was kind of slow, but it's still really good. I would definitely read it again even though it wasn't like super like fast paced or anything. Um, as you can see it's pretty short so yeah, it's very good. Next we have The Effort List by Julie Halpern. Um, I read this book for the first time as a library book, and I just fell in love with it. It's about this girl whose best friend has cancer. Not a serious form of cancer, but her best friend has this bucket list, um, as she calls it, the F it list. And so she tells the friend, the main character, that she has to do all of the things on her bucket list. So it's kind of just about her going through that. I love bucket list books. They're just, I don't know what, uh, what it is about them, they're just really appealing to me. So if you have any bucket list books, recommendations, please leave them down below. I would love to read them. This is a great book. Love it. Next we have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. This is a very popular book on booktube if you haven't heard about it. It's about, it's a love story between Eleanor and Park and they both have some diverse experiences. Um, Eleanor doesn't come from such a great home and she has some low body image, I guess you could say. She doesn't really love her body as much as I believe she should. Um, Park is, what is he? I want to say he's, I don't remember what um, ethnicity he is. He's not American, so he has some struggles with that. 
Um, I want to say he's Korean, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, it's just about their love story. It's very cute, and I mean, Rainbow Rowell is one of my favorite authors, so it's a great book. Next we have Alex as well by Alyssa Brugman. Um, I haven't read this book yet. As you can see, I bought it from a library book sale. I really don't know what it's about. I could read the inside if you want me to. It's about a boy who, um, she decides that she is a girl. Um, and so it's about her family and her school and them dealing with that, you know, some changes. Um, so yeah, some good LGBTQIA representation in here. I haven't read it yet, but I'm very looking forward to it. Next is Paperweight by Meg Haston. I have read this book and I highly recommend. It is about eating disorders. So um, yeah, trigger warning there. Um, it was very, very good. I just love eating disorder books, if you can't tell. It's very great, highly recommend. Next is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. Um, I haven't read this book yet, but I've heard lots of good things about it on booktube. I don't really even know what it's about. I think it's about twins and like something happens and then they don't speak for a while. That's all I really know about it. I don't really want to know much more because I kind of want to go into it without knowing a whole lot. Um, yeah. Okay, so next we have my favorite book of all time, Winter Girls by Lori Halls Anderson. Um, this book is about a girl named Leah who has anorexia and her best friend Cassie had bulimia. Um, but it starts out with Leah finding out that Cassie has passed away because of her eating disorder. Um, but these two haven't been friends for a while, so it's kind of hard for Leah because it was her best friend, but they hadn't talked, but she kind of feels guilty for not reaching out. And it also, it's about her being haunted by Cassie's ghost, but also dealing with her eating disorder. And this is actually the UK edition because look at it, isn't it gorgeous? Um, the US edition is okay. I do have a copy of that one as well. It's just at home. Um, but yeah, I bought the UK edition because it's pretty. So next is I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. Um, I actually bought this book because the bookmarked book club, if you don't know what that is, that is Zoe from Read by Zoe, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and um, Haley from Haley and Bookland. They have this um, weekly live show, which is actually currently um, on hold at the moment, but they used to have a weekly live show where they um, talked about different book topics, and um, in addition to that, they also did monthly book readings. So this was, I want to say it was June's book of the month? Yeah, I think it was June's book of the month. Um, so I bought it for that reason because I wanted to read it, and my library didn't have it, and it wasn't on overdrive, so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just buy a copy. Um, I haven't read it yet, though, so I haven't watched the live show yet, which is kind of sad, but I'll get there eventually. I don't really know what it's about. Um, I don't really want to know. Um, all I know is that I have read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, and I didn't really like that one that much. Everybody else seems to really like it, but I didn't for some reason. So, I mean, I was kind of skeptical about going into it, but I guess we'll see how it turns out. Next is I'm Not Missing by Carrie Fountain. Um, so my friend and currently roommate um, bought this book for me while she was in New York. She said she bought it because the cover was pretty. Um, all I really know about it is that it's contemporary and it has a pretty cover. So yeah, eventually I will read it. Thanks, Faith, for that book. Love you. <laughs> Next is The Fall in Our Stars by John Green. Um, I've read this book twice, I believe. If you haven't heard about it or watched the movie, it is about a girl named Hazel who has cancer, and she meets this guy named Augustus who used to have cancer, and they kind of have this cute little love story. Um, it's a very good book. I highly recommend. If you haven't read it already, where you've been missing out. Have you been living under a rock? Come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I obviously have it because it is John Green, and I love John Green. So next we have Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. I have read this book, and it is my favorite Sarah Dessen book. It, I love it because it reads as if you're in a dream, as the title kind of conveys. Um, it's just about this girl, what's her name, Caitlin, and she meets, um, this boy, and there's some controversy with this boy and her family, but yeah, um, I love Sarah Dessen. I like her contemporary novels, and so I highly recommend this one in particular if you're going to read Sarah Dessen, because this one's my favorite. So next we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. 
Um, this is an autographed copy that I bought at the Bookworm, I think. Look, it has a really pretty art in the middle. Yay, love art. Um, yeah, so there's the autograph. I have read this book before. I read it a couple years ago, and what I really like about it is it has a college student main character, which I'm also a college student, so I kind of relate to that. Um, I read it, I think I was a junior or a senior when I read it, so I was looking into going to college and trying to figure out all the odds and ends, so it was really good for me in that transition phase. Yeah, other than being about a girl in college, she also writes fan fiction for the Simon Snow series. Um, Rainbow Rowell also has a spin-off series about the books that she writes about called, well, she has Carry On, and then recently um, Wayward Son came out. Great book, definitely recommend. Okay, and the other thing I have on this shelf is this little butterfly sort of thing. It does open, the lid comes off, and you can put, like, jewelry in it, but I've taped it closed because if it sits like this and the shelf shakes, the front will come off. Um, yeah, my boyfriend got this for me as a Christmas present last year, two years ago, something like that. Um, yeah, I love it because it's really cute, and I love butterflies, so... Yeah, thanks, boyfriend. So this is my Hunger Games shelf. As you can see, there are only Hunger Games books on here. Um, I'm just going to pull them all off at once. Pretty sure you guys have seen the Hunger Games series, but um, I really like these copies because they are the foil edition, so they're very beautiful. I also do have um, the standard hardcover copies, but they're at home. Yeah, I found two of them at, I want to say Goodwill. Um... And so it was like, these are gorgeous, I have to buy them. So um, I bought the third one from Thrift Books. So yeah, I just have them here in case I ever decide I want to pick up The Hunger Games for the fourth time, something like that. I love this series. And while we're here, the things that I have on this shelf are this little box. Um, it does open and I keep some jewelry in it. They're in this little pouch. Um... I think, I want to say my dad got it like garage sale or something and he gave it to me. So, yeah, it's really cute. It's got some cute little carvings on it. And yeah, I love it. And then we also have this tiny little turtle. Um, he doesn't have a name, but I got him from my grandma who recently passed away. So I keep it on here as a reminder of her because she loved the little toy stuffed animal sort of things. I also have this box, which has some more jewelry in it, um, has some earrings and stuff like that, and then I have this box, which has some sort of pins in it, um, for my college that my friend got me. This is a music pin. So on this next shelf, we have, this is my sort of catch-all, um, TBR shelf. Um, so first we have Annabelle by the band Alisana. This is actually a book based off a album trilogy by the band Alisana. They're a very small band, um, like hard rock band. Definitely recommend you check them out if you're into heavy rock music. Um, it is actually signed by the lead singer and then the guy who does the screaming, screamer, I guess you would call him. Um, I got it at a concert I went to a couple years ago. Yeah, it's very, very confusing. I read it once and I still don't really understand, so I'm probably going to read it again at some point. Next I have City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I really don't know what this book is about. Probably about ghosts, a girl who can see ghosts, I think. Um, but I bought it at Half Price Books because it's Victoria Schwab and I love her. I've read um, The Savage Song in Our Dark Duet, that The Monsters of Verity Duology, that's what it's called. And I really liked that, so I decided I'd check this one out as well. And next we have Bared to You by Sylvia Day. I actually bought this one because my friend recommended it. And she said that she read it while she was in middle school. And she um, wanted me to annotate it on my thoughts and then give it to her so she could reread it. So it is technically a gift for somebody. I just haven't annotated it yet. So um, I'll get there eventually. I don't know what it's really about either, but I'm not really too worried about that. So sorry. Next we have Optimus Die First by Susan Nielsen. Um, I bought this one at that same library sale. I don't really know what it's about to be honest, but it's about a pessimist and an optimist and um, that's all I really know. Uh, yeah, it's on my TBR. That's why it's on the shelf. 
Next we have Four, A Divergent Collection by Veronica Roth. This is um, one of the spinoff books to Divergent series. I've read that full series, but I haven't read the four books yet. Um, I bought this one, I think, at like Goodwill or something I saw it. Um, I didn't really like the Divergent series that much. I really liked the first book, but I didn't like the last book. I really didn't like that one. But I kind of want to read this one because I really like Four as a character, so I would like to get some of that backstory. Um, after I finish it, I'm going to give it to my friend, who the one who actually annotated Speak. But I'm going to give it to her um, because she really likes Divergent. So after I finish it, that's where it's going. So next we have Fantastic Beasts and Crimes of Grindelwald by J.K. Rowling. This is the original screenplay for um, that movie. Um, I haven't read it yet. Um, I actually haven't read the original Fantastic Beasts, the first one, yet either. So that's kind of why I haven't read this one yet. I mostly bought it just because it has a really pretty cover and I like Harry Potter. So the last thing on this shelf is this little guy. He is a forest spirit from Princess Mononoke, if you have seen that movie. They are adorable and I love them. I got it at Nebraskan last year, which is an anime convention held in Nebraska. I think he's actually a little finger puppet because he's got a little hole in the bottom, but he just kind of sits on there. His name is Boshke. Which, if you don't know, bosque is the Spanish word for forest. Um, but in my high school, um, everybody said bosque as kind of a joke instead of saying bosque. So that's his name. Um, yeah, and he kind of hangs out here because he's cute and I love him. So this is my um, historical fiction shelf. And first we have Rumblefish by Essie Hinton. I love Essie Hinton's work. I read The Outsiders when I was in like sixth grade and I just fell in love with it. I've read that book like four times since then. I have read this one, but I don't, it was such a long time ago, I don't really remember what it was about, so I found a copy of it at a secondhand store, so I decided I'd buy it again and probably give it a reread sometime. Next is Fever 1793 by Lori Halls Anderson. Um, I actually just bought this book, like, last weekend at a garage sale, um, and I only bought it because it's Lori Halls Anderson because I love her book. So I don't know what it's about and I don't really want to know. I, all I know is it's, it's historical fiction. Because it, see the first sentence is August 1793. So that's all I know. And I don't want to know anything else. Next we have Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wayne. Again, I don't really know much about this one. I just know it's um, historical fiction. I think it's about World War II. Yeah, I think it's about World War II. Um... But I've heard good things about it on booktube, so that's why I picked it up. Next is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Um, I love this copy, number one, because, well, it's a platinum edition, so it has fancy um, end pages. And it also has deckled edges, which I really love. And I just really like this cover more than I like some of the other covers that you can find for The Outsiders. I don't really like the mass market paperback covers. But this one's really special to me because there is a sort of book exchange thing outside a store in one of, in my hometown and uh, my boyfriend went to the store one day and he saw it in there and so you you can kind of just um, put books in if you don't want them you take books out if you decide you like that one you don't have to pay for them or anything so that's really nice um, but my boyfriend saw it in there and he thought of me so he got it for me and yeah so I really like I really have a um, sentimental value to this book. Next is The Help by Katherine Stockett um, I haven't read this one yet, but I bought it because I love the movie, and um, it, if you haven't seen the movie, it's about Jackson, Mississippi in the mid-civil rights movement era, and it's about the maids um, and how they're treated, and it's a very good book, or movie, I guess I haven't read the book yet. Very good movie, recommend the movie, um, but yeah, I bought the book because I like the movie and I want to read the book. And finally on this shelf we have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, this is a historical fiction and that's all I really know about it. I hear lots of really good things on booktube so I'm really excited to read this one. And the last thing on this shelf is this little guy. Um, I got him from my Spanish teacher when I graduated. I really don't know what he is but he's made out of some sort of marble um, and it's it was made in Mexico so yeah he kind of just sits up here and has a good old time with my books. And so down here on my bottom shelves, we have a couple of things. Actually, I have this sitting on my dresser nightstand thing. Um, it used to hang, but it kept falling off. 
so I took it down. But yeah, it's a time turner from Harry Potter. Eventually I'll figure out a way to hang this up, I just haven't yet. <laughs> also I have this little cute um, plant that I got from Ikea, so it kind of just hangs out down here. And here we have a ring tree that I also got from Ikea. Um, it has a little donut, whoops, donut lip balm in it. I put my bobby pins and like hair accessories in it, but I just think it's cute. So on this shelf we have Specials by Scott Westerfeld. This is the third book in the Ugly series. Um, I do have all of the books and he is expanding on this series. I think he's putting out four new books every fall, I want to say. And there's one out right now, one of the new books out. This takes place in a world where when you turn 16, you get the operation to make you a pretty. So you go from the way you were born looking to the society's standard of pretty. Um, and it's about Tally and her friend Shay. And Shay doesn't want to get the operation. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the third book and also um, the fourth book in the series. Obviously, they're different covers because uh, they're from different editions of the book, but um, yeah, good series. I'm currently rereading them, actually. That's why these two are here. Um, I've already read the first two in the series, so that's why they're not on my shelf because they're at home, but I still, I still haven't read these ones yet, so that's why they're here. Oh, by the way, this is kind of my um, series shelf. Uh, so is that one over there. I mean, that one's kind of hodgepodge of things, but this one is kind of a series show. So here we have the Wake trilogy. Um, so we have Wake, Fade, and Gone. Um, one of my favorite uh, trilogies of all time. It's about a girl who kind of has this power slash curse of if she's near somebody while they're dreaming, she will fall into their dream. And so it's kind of just about her dealing with that and she meets a guy and there's a cute little love story in it that I really enjoy. I really recommend these ones. The first time I read Wake, I read it three times in like one weekend because I didn't have anything else to read. And I really, really enjoy this series, so yeah. And also on this shelf we have this little dog that I also got from my grandma. He doesn't have a name because I just got him recently. You know, if we want, we could name him. Leave some name suggestions down below and maybe um, in a future video I'll tell you guys what his name is. Um, yeah, but he kind of just hangs out with my books. So on this last shelf is, it's also kind of a series shelf. Um, not really because this one isn't part of a series, I don't think, but these all other ones are. Um, so we'll get started. Here right in front of it I have another pumpkin because it's spooky season. Um... Okay, so first I have The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. This is the only book in The Raven Boys cycle that I have um, because I haven't started it yet. But I bought this one to kind of encourage myself to start the series because everybody on booktube seems to love it. And I haven't read it yet, so I'm missing out. <laughs> um, I don't know what it's about and I don't really want to know because I kind of want to go in surprised. Here we have Illuminae by a Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi um, trilogy about, I think it's about outer space, and I'm not 100% sure. I'm about 20 pages into this one, um, so I don't really know exactly what's going on, and I don't really want to know yet. Yeah, this is the only book that I have from this trilogy, but yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Next we have Breaking Butterflies by M. Angelias. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Again, I don't know what this book is about. I mostly just bought it because it has a butterfly on the cover. And I think when I originally read the synopsis, I enjoyed what I read. I just don't remember what it is, and I don't really want to refresh myself because when I decide to read it, I want to go in blind. And finally, we have The Evolution of Mara Dyer and The Retribution of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. Um, I do have the first book in this trilogy. It's just at home because I've already read it. But yeah, I brought them to college with me because I haven't read them yet, and I want to. They are on my fall TBR, so hopefully I'll get to them. They are about a girl who has um, some sort of powers, and she kind of has this romance with another um, guy, and yeah, there's some supernatural stuff going on in there, so it's kind of interesting. And on this shelf, I have this little red box thing, and inside of it, I have a Pokemon chip counter thing because I got it from my boyfriend, um, so it kind of just sits on my shelf because I think it's cute. I actually don't remember where I got this box, but I like it, so it sits on my shelf. 
couple other books I wanted to add to this video. Um, the reason why they're not on my shelf is because these are all like poetry books and well one of them, two of them are graphic novels. Um, so this is my living room, or my roommates and I's living room, and, um, so here's the books that we have, and not all of them are mine, so I'm just going to show you the ones that are mine. So, first we have Please Don't Go Before I Get Better Poems by Madison Kuhn, and I really don't know what this is about. I found it at Half Priced Books, and, um, I just grabbed it because I liked the cover. Again, I'm really bad at cover buys, but it's a poetry book, and it's probably like contemporary poetry, so I think I'll enjoy it. Next, we have Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Kaur I cannot say her name. I'm really sorry. I think it's Rupi Kaur. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This is a really popular contemporary poetry book in the BookTube universe. Um, she also has another book called The Sun and Her Flowers, I think, but I haven't read that one, but I have read this one, and it's... It's really good. It's about sexual abuse and women going through that and learning how to cope with that. So it's really emotional and really like hard hitting, but it's also really, really good. And it has some really interesting um, sort of images, which are one of my favorite things about this book. Some of them are pretty graphic. So if you're kind of young and you're not like mature enough for that, then stay away from it. But other than that, it's really good. Next, we have Truth and Beauty by Ann Patchett. I have no idea what this is about because I bought it for a class. Um, so, and we haven't read it yet. I actually got it from Thrift Books, which is why it's a little beat up. Um, also, it has deckled edges, which love deckled edges. And it has these things, which are also kind of cool. But yeah, so I bought it for a class and we haven't gotten there yet. So when we do get to it, I'll give you an update on the synopsis because I'm not really going to... I don't want to read anything and I don't want to like spoil it for myself, I guess. Next is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien 2 by John Sun. And this is a graphic novel about this little alien dude who's... He's such the... He is the cutest little character I've ever seen in my life. Um, and it's about him like going to Earth and finding other animals and people and they he talks to them and it's the sweetest story you'll ever see and like the the drawings are just gorgeous and it's very like it's adorable but it's also like existential there's so many things in there that like the little touches of philosophy that you never would have thought of and like I did not expect out of a book that has these adorable little drawings so if you're into graphic novels definitely definitely pick this one up i highly recommend this is one of my favorite books of all time i cried reading it like three different times um yeah it's adorable go get it like right now the next book we have out here is persepolis by marjane satrapi i am really sorry if i butchered that um this is also a graphic novel that and i think it's a memoir is a memoir I'm not sure. I had to buy this one for another class, but I've heard of it before, so I was kind of excited to read it, and I don't think we're reading it until the end of the semester, which is kind of sad, but when I do get to it, I'll give you an update on what it's about and my thoughts. And the last book in here is I Love My Love by Regina Biddy. Um, so this is a poetry book that I found at Goodwill, and I thought the cover was cute, and... Um, actually, my friend is the one who found it, and she read the in like a couple pages on the inside, and um, she's like, oh, these poems are so cute. And I, all I really know about it is I think some of them are about motherhood. I'm not 100% sure because I've read like four pages and that's it. Eventually, I'll get back to it. But in the meantime, it's kind of just hanging out and looking cute. And one more thing. Um, I keep forgetting that I stash books all over the house because I like pick them up and read them and then I just like never go back to them. Um, so this one was in my bag, and it's um, The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is also a poetry book. It's about a princess who, like, kind of loses herself, but then she finds herself again. And um, it's a metaphor about a princess, but, like, it's obviously a metaphor. And I'm about 70 pages into it. Um, and it's been a while since I've been reading it, but I'll get back to it eventually. You know, like I say about everything else. And then the other book that I'm reading is No Such Person by Caroline B. Cooney. As you can see, I got this from a library sale. Um, 
I'm also reading this one, which is why it was in my bag too, because I'm currently reading it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's a murder mystery about two sisters who live on a lake and um, one day there's this accident and um, one of the girls gets arrested and yeah. Um, so it's a murder mystery and it is on my fall TBR actually because it's a murder mystery and you know, kind of spoopy vibes. So yeah, there's this one too. And I think that's all of the books that are around my house. Um, we may be back for more updates if it's not. So that's it for my bookshelf tour. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a lot of editing to do now. Um, I hope you guys liked the little variant of me adding in my own little um, stories about each book. Because I don't really have many books to look at here. So I kind of wanted to give you something else to watch for. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Um, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye! Struggle bus. No lucky ducks stay up there. Ugh, I can't get them out. Oh no. Oh no. Boop, boop. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't get better. Oh, that's not the title. This hurts my arm. Holding your phone? No, holding the book. It's about um, women. It's really about... Gosh, I don't even know how to explain what it's about. Um, it's about... Um, I don't know how to explain it. What's the word I'm looking for? Sexual abuse? Sure. Okay. Huh? So it's about... This little alien dude who's, he's such the, he is the cutest little character I've ever seen in my life. <gasps> There's a giant bug! Faith, kill the bug! Oh my goodness, it huge! Oh, gross! Get it out! <gasps> Okay, so she's out there with the bug, and I'm gonna wait to film some more because she's gonna come back in and it's gonna make lots of noise. Do you get the bug? Yes. Okay. Don't forget about me. <laughs> Were you listening to me?